This is a really interesting part of what you say, that the past isn't predictive. Correct. So talk to me more about that, because I, I would say most people would say that the past is definitely predictive. Right, which is great, but they'd be wrong, <laughs> right? So they would be wrong, and the simple fact of the matter is the past is real, okay? So the only thing that makes it predictive is if my behavior stays the same. So I'll give you a great story. Um, so we both grew up in Tacoma, and there used to be a, a thing called Toastmasters. I don't know if you remember Toastmasters, but Toastmasters was a local, regional, and a national speaking group for anybody that wanted to get better at speaking. <clears throat> well, my dad had gone to a Toastmasters early on and heard one of the most successful magazine entrepreneurs in the world speak. He comes back and tells me, I just had a chance to hear one of the most successful magazine entrepreneurs in the world uh, speak. And he said, when are you taking your SAT? I said, I'm taking it next year. He said, well, this guy was failing out of high school. He was struggling. He was raised by a single mom in the Midwest, but he promised his mother he would take a test called the SAT. So he takes the SAT in May, his junior year, doesn't expect anything, gets his score back in June. Now the SAT, which I don't know how many your population know, but it's, it's a standardized test with a math part and a verbal part. Both are scored out of 800 points. Well, this guy takes it, he's, he's bombing, he's failing out of school, he doesn't expect anything as he's telling the story at Toastmasters. Well, he gets a 1480 out of 1600. So he's stunned, right? That would be for the smart That's people that listen to your podcast. Insane, yeah. Right, cognitive dissonance. Right? I got a like, 900 on my SATs just right. to give people a frame. Right, and I got a, a 1090, excuse and me. And I got a 1010, right? I was just, hey, four digits, <laughs> it was a miracle, right? And, and, but it's a hard test, and it, you, you know, it's a variety of different things. So he gets the score, and his mother, doing what any mother would do knowing her kids, says, did you cheat? Right? She knows her son, and he says, I swear to God, I tried to cheat, but the way the numbers were and the scantrons and the bubbles, you couldn't cheat. So she says, you mean to tell me you really got that score? He said, yeah, I got the score. So he's stunned, Tom. So as my dad's telling me the story, I'm like, okay. So he says, all right, so what he decides is because he realizes he's smart, and he's going into his senior year, he says, I'm gonna to go to class. Now he starts to go to class, he doesn't hang out with who he did when he didn't go to class. All right, teachers see him in class and they said, hey, maybe Franklin Pierce, maybe we missed the boat on this kid. So they start to treat him differently. Well, as the guy would tell the story, he graduates, goes to a community college, goes on to Wichita State, goes on to the Ivy League, and becomes this massively successful magazine entrepreneur. So I said, okay, well, the guy was always smart, he just needed a standardized test to unlock it. My dad said, no. That's not the story, and this is what I want you to understand. He said, 12 years after all this guy's success, he gets a letter in the mail from Princeton, New Jersey. Doesn't think anything about it. The next day, his wife says, you're gonna open it. He opens it. True story, turns out the SAT board will periodically review their test-taking procedures and the policies. The year he took the test, he was one of 13 people sent the wrong SAT score. His actual score was a 740 out of 1600. <laughs> And he said, people think my whole life changed when I got the 1480. But what happened? My whole life changed when I started acting like a 1480. And what does a 1480 do? He goes to class. Well, this is one of the first stories I would share when I had my opportunity at Alabama, or Florida State, or Georgia. So A, your language is powerful. But number two, your behavior is way ahead of your success. And so many people let their feelings dictate what they do as opposed to throw your behavior out there. Russell Wilson's 5'10". He shouldn't be playing pro football, but he behaves like the best quarterback in the country, and he's done that since before he was at that level, and then his feelings and emotions and his skill caught up to that behavior. I think the lesson my dad was trying to teach me um, ultimately was in addition to my language, what I do, not how I feel about my past, is gonna determine who I am in the future. And that's what I think neutral thinking is. And I think neutral thinking isn't just thinking, I think it's behavior and I think it's language. And so your behavior is what's gonna change you. But you also have to start by asking yourself, what do I want and why do I want it? Why don't I have it? You know, what am I willing to do to get it? 